What's up mga ka-farmers and welcome back to my channel. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize. I wasn't um, active for more than a month but now I already found time to post new topics. So, balik ulit tayo sa learning. Anyway, disclaimer lang before we start. I'm not an expert yet but I'm starting off. No, I, I find it vital to share this video for the ones who are planning to start off uh, Kalamundin farming. Um, in this video, I'm going to discuss um, important notes when you are planning to order um, a volume of Kalamundin or Kalamansi. No? Um, also, I, I'm going to discuss important considerations before ordering from a, a reputable source or supplier and also how to mobilize no stay put let's get into it So, the first topic I'm going to discuss is mobilizing your ordered kalamunsi. Um, I think in my, since I've, I've um, managed two farms, one in Cebu and also one in Pohol, um, I've ordered a number of kalamundin or kalamansi from my suppliers, no? Um, in this case, in these two instances, I, uh, I ordered from a source online and of course, over a span of two years, um, we build up a relationship. No? So I've noticed that um, during mobilization, um, the vehicle that he uses is a small multi-cab. Um, um, small multi-cab uh, can only accommodate hundreds. But if, mona, it's it's very important that uh, when you order calamansi, you have to know the vehicle of your suppliers. If he has um, a van, a canter, or a multi-cab. And that will also vary depending on the number of kalamundin you're going to order. Um, you have to make sure, or you have to see how these suppliers uh, mobilize your plants. Because you're going to stress out the plants if they ipapatong-patong mo yung mga, mga plants mo. I believe that it's not going to be good because during, or in my experience, it creates a lot of casualties. Marami po ang mamamatay if pinapatong-patong mo ang mga kalamansi. More importantly, when the kalamansi is young or perhaps um, the roots are not yet fully developed. Okay, number two. Important notes or important considerations when ordering. You have to know your supplier. There are a lot of Kalamundin varieties in the Philippines. Um, I went all around Bohol, in Ubay, in, in different areas. Department of Agriculture, marami akong nilapitan. Pumunta akong Tagbilaran City. Um, I found out that, uh, especially if it's a trader, if just if they're just buying from a farmer, of calamansi they're not sure of the variety that they have every time i visit uh, a seller i always ask if they know the variety a lot of claims there are um, exotic uh, local um, 
or what what we call in our in Cebu Bisaya or there are also Australian varieties also they there are also varieties that they call King Calamansi or the ones that uh, are out in the market yung malalaki now um, what I ordered from my supplier is the Australian variety this is a uh, known commercially na ginagamit for commercial use for juicing for for a use in restaurants and in the kitchen okay so you have to know the variety is very important hindi pwedeng if you order like say for example i order thousands hundreds five hundreds it has to be all the same variety otherwise do not order from that supplier because ayaw mo namang iba iba yung types of calamansi that you have but of course you can you can do one variety in one area or another variety in a different area but you just have to know what variety of kalamundin you have or you have purchased okay also uh, out in the market here particularly in Cebu in the area where I'm from there's also two types um, there's um, air layered or marcoted there's also grafted um, a grafted calamansi is the one that has a um, the one that's holding the plant is a young zion and the top portion is an old zion which already is capable of producing fruits no so it's important if you have the the um, grafted it's going to last um, probably I, I'm not sure I, I know that the marketed types can only last uh, 12 to 15 years the marketed types the the what you call grafted may last even more or probably may double because you have a long, young uh, plant holding the the old plant on top okay so there's also another type of kalamundin that's also available in the market the freshly cut um, marketed plants Okay, so you have let's recap no? We have the marketed or the air layered. You have also the number two, the grafted. So both in polybags. The third one, there's also one available plant in the market that is what they call fresh cuts or um ito yung mga plants na naka air layer at saka fresh na pinutol no hindi siya naka poly bags so tatlo ang available in the market um, you have to know what type of plant you are going to order magtataka ka kasi yung fresh cuts it will probably cost between 30 to 50 pesos only but the chances is during the day that it's harvested or it's cut dapat i-travel mo na at saka ilagay mo na sa polybags so if you have that luxury of time and if your area is cold or in high humidity or naka highland ka pwede yun um, pick it up early in the morning bring it to your farm and then put it in bags that way you can save um, a lot of money also if you have the manpower to do that Otherwise, you have to ask your suppliers. You'll you'll better off buying the ones that are already in poly bags. And in my case, I always purchase in poly bags just to ensure that uh, the plant already has um, ample or enough roots. And also, it's much stable. Na well rooted na yung plant na binili mo. Yung fresh cuts high risk of dying yun. Okay. So, also let's discuss a little bit about um, the fresh cuts. Okay, during your transplant or dur during your yung minarkot nung araw na minarkot mo yung kalamundin, before it will start to produce roots na visible, I know you've already made your research on how to propagate kalamundin. No? From the day na um, ginawa mo yung marketing 
30 days pa yun mag start to develop roots. So if it's a fresh cut, then you place, place it on your poly bags. Now during the poly bags, in my experience, a lot of suppliers will just have it stay there for two weeks. Of course, yes, the roots will start to develop. It will start to grow. Basta tama yung pag-aalaga ng kalamun din. Two weeks, pwede mo nang immobilize yun. But, there's a high risk that it will die. Sayang lang. If you're going to disturb the stem during transport, you will have a lot of casualties. Okay? So, it's very important that you know. And, of course, your supplier must be honest na from the day it was cut from the mother tree or the mother plant, for me, it has to be 30 days old or at least a month. Kung aabot ng 2 months, okay, pero I don't think you can wait that long. But on the average, it's best that it's 30 days old from the day it was removed from the mother plant. Alright? So, 30 days dapat. 2 weeks, okay naman, pero dapat mala malapit lang yung mobilization from the supplier to your farm. Okay? Um, also, um, in my experience, I purchased a lot of kalamundin. Some sell it a little bit expensive, some a little bit cheap, but you have to know, kasi minsan, if it's cheap, it's a small plant. It may be um, a small or medium sized plant, around a foot high. Um, yung iba naman medyo mahal. Um, probably it's stable. It's uh, bigger than the usual. And it's starting to grow na branches or new leaves. No? So, you have to know the sizes that a supplier is selling. Go visit your supplier. Go check the plants. Um, you have to be familiar with the sizes you are getting. And you also have to tell your supplier that um, you have standard size. Um, it has to be at least 15 to 18 inch or 20 inch high. Dapat uniform. Di katatanggap ng maliliit na plants. Now that that depends on the price uh, range of what you are buying. Okay? It is best na when you purchase kalamundin plants, um, may signs of growth. Growth na. No? Um, in Bisaya, they call it salingsing or unti-unti ng tumutubo. You can see this. You, ha you can see small leaves developing. That type of plant is stable. Okay? So, Things to watch out when purchasing. Um, the behavior of a kalamundin when you market it is if it's a fresh market, um, nahuhulog yung leaves niya. So, if there's very few leaves, you have a high risk that uh, the kalamundin is not yet very stable. So, you have to look out for that as well. Okay, so... Um, during mobilization and from the pickup to delivery of your farm, um, please be prepared that there will be casualties. For example, you ordered 100 um, plants. Expect the least you will have a casualty within one month's time, 10%. So, meron dyan, 10 will die. Um, due to transplant shock um, also you have to consider that the plants will also acclimatize in your area um, if you already visited your supplier's area you know the humidity you know the gano kainit yung area niya as compared to your farm you have to know that so kung mas malamig naman yung farm mo um, it's safe to say that uh the plants will have high chances of surviving. Okay, you don't have to worry anything. Unless otherwise, your supplier has a high humidity, naka high land siya, mainit, as compared to your farm, which is a low land, then you have a high risk of 
of casualties during um, the purchase of plants. So, if example, your target is to plant 1,000 kalamundin plants in, or trees in your area, you might as well order at least 1,200. So, yung 200 mo, buffer na yun sa magiging casualties. Of course, that will vary depending on your proper care, the experience of your farm assistants. Also, if you have uh, technical guidance from the Department of Agriculture or you have a tech, uh, an experienced farmer in, in your team, much better. Okay. Also, additional tip pala. Um, so, pagdating ng plants in your farm, let it stay there for at least one week to acclimatize. Acclimatize is that the right word? Acclimatize. I think I think it's the, the right word. So that the plants will adjust in the humidity, in the temperature in your area. Okay? Wag lagyan ng tubig araw-araw. You have to fill the soil before you water the plants. It's best to let it dry. You, know, you have to feel the plant. Do not put in direct sunlight right away. During the first two days, put it in a shaded spot and then slowly put it in an area where it will start to receive sunlight. No? Gradual lang. And then after a week, you can start to transplant your kalamundin. Okay? So when you start to plant it in the area, do not apply synthetic fertilizers during the first month. Wag muna. Allow the roots to start to develop before introducing foliar or synthetic fertilizers. It is best na gumamit na lang kayo ng chicken dung or chicken manure that it's dry. Wag masyadong ilapit sa plants. Okay? So, let it develop the roots first before introducing your fertilizers. Okay? Medyo mataas na yung topic natin. Let's proceed to my short video on how I mobilize my recent order. Pasensya na uh, as I am speaking in Visaya but um, I will just put a translation at the bottom portion okay enjoy guys thank you for watching and until then wait for new topics to discuss and updates about my kalimundin journey okay please don't forget to like and subscribe and share to your friends have a good day everyone and enjoy the next clip Ano ni ang gugat? As you can see, dapat insured na makita ninyo nga baga ang gugat. Nung pangili nga, nung pangili nga, nung pangili nga, kaya mga bang suppliers, gamay ragyo kayo o gugat, gamay ang tayo o dito dapat sa stem, matay na. Bawal ang patong, dapat dikit-dikit lang para siguro buhi. Okay. Right, pick up sa itong order ng limoncito ni Joel o ni Jamil. Ani on dyan na siya pag-cluster ng limoncito. Aroon di mga tigbok. Di ba, Will? Oo. Oh. Patong-patong, delikado. Ah, wala itong gigantan. Five hundred kalamundin. Dari, pick up na to. Pagkagugat. 
ato ipakita dari de pita ang pugat mag picture lang ko Yes.